Hello and welcome to the video by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. As I'm sure you're aware, around three years ago, the highly successful Raspberry Pi was released. Since then, well over 3 million have been sold in a couple of different variations. We have seen the Raspberry Pi Model B, B+, A and A+, come to light, but today I have a Pi that's a little different. It is my honour to introduce to you the next revolutionary step in the microcomputer world. The Raspberry Pi 2, and as always, I have one sitting right in front of me. But it looks just like the Model B+, Plus, I hear you cry. Well, you would be correct in saying that. The board has exactly the same footprint as its predecessor. What's actually changed then? Well, the Raspberry Pi 2 features an ARM V7 quad-core processor, the BCM2836. Each core runs at a blistering 900 MHz, making for an incredible power boost when compared to the old 700 MHz ARM V6 BCM2835s all of the previous generations of Pi feature at their hearts. The changes don't end there. The Raspberry Pi 2 also comes shipped with an entire gig of RAM, which is now located on the bottom of the board. This makes one speedy little single board computer that remarkably still costs only $35, or your local equivalent. Yup, that's right. The Pi has gone from a 700MHz single core computer to a 900MHz quad core monster, without changing the price. More importantly, the foundation has done it in such a way that will make everything backwards compatible. All of the old tutorials, add-on boards, resources, etc. They will all work with the Pi 2. More information on that in a minute. After running a few preliminary tests, I can say that the performance has improved sixfold when compared to the B+. So let's take a closer look at the Raspberry Pi 2. As I previously mentioned, the board layout of the Pi 2 is exactly the same as the B+. We still have four USB 2s, you'll find the same 10100 Ethernet connector, as well as the usual full 1080p HDMI out. As with the B+, the 3.5mm audio jack here features a fourth pole in order to get analog video out. Moving on, the Pi 2 still requires a micro USB power supply rated at 5 volts. Also present are the camera and display connectors, as well as the 40 pin GPIO header that is of course HAT compliant. It is worth noting the pinout of the GPIO connector is identical to all of the previous Pis. Now let's have a look at what's actually going on in the centre of the board where all of the changes have been made. So here is the BCM2836 quad-core processor running at 900MHz. Looking back, when the Pi was first being developed in the years running up to 2012, a 700MHz processor was considered respectable and ample with regards to the Foundation's goals of education. Three or four years on, and sadly that is no longer the case. Many consider the previous generations of Pis to be too slow. Really, in order to run the latest educational software and programs, the Pi needs to be more powerful. This led to a lot of speculation that if the Foundation released a new model with a different chip, then all of the previous work making tutorials and resources would be made invalid. Luckily, the engineers at Broadcom and Raspberry Pi have ensured that this is far from the case. As everything on the new BCM2836, apart from the ARM core, is identical to the old chip, Everything from add-on boards to Raspberry Pi books are compatible with the new Raspberry Pi 2. Eben Upton of the Raspberry Pi Foundation says that this chip has not been designed solely for Raspberry Pi, but the Pi was the primary intended customer. This is different as in the past the old BCM2835 was more a chip for being used in small media centres and mobile phones. If we flip the Raspberry Pi 2 around, you'll see the familiar microSD card holder as well as a new piece of silicon. This is the 1 gig RAM package. Previously, the RAM was stacked on top of the Pi's processor, but it has now been relocated down here. The 1 gig of RAM complements the new quad-core perfectly. With all of this new hardware, you may be concerned that the Pi 2 is going to use up more power. Do not fear, however, as in order to lower the power consumption, the new Pi's clock speed will be variable and drop from 900MHz to 600MHz when idling. Lack of memory and processing power have been the main issues people have had with the first generation of Pi's, and this upgrade addresses those complaints in spades. On the sideline, many of you will be wondering about what will happen with regards to the Raspberry Pi 1s, the B+, A+, etc. According to the Foundation, those will be continued for as long as there is demand. How about a Model A Raspberry Pi 2? When will that happen? Eben says that there will probably be a Model A version at some point, but not for at least a year due to the financials. Now it's all very well talking about improved performance, but let's actually plug in the Pi 2 and see how the new hardware really affects the user experience. You can expect to see dramatic changes in performance and responsiveness of Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 2. 
Educational applications such as Sonic Pi used to use around 80% of the CPU. With the new hardware, you can expect it to use around 3 to 5%. Let's launch up Minecraft in order to have a look at the new performance rates. So as you just saw, Raspbian acts with a new sense of fluidity. No longer do you have to wait years for applications to open, and now you can truly multitask. For example, you can see that the Minecraft Pi Edition is only using around 5% of the CPU when idling. This new power is excellent. Eben says that it broadens the range of educational programs that run well on the Pi, and now, in a very real sense, Raspberry Pi 2 is a viable entry-level PC. In conclusion, the Raspberry Pi 2 will shake up not just Raspberry Pi, but also the wider computing hemisphere. The vastly improved hardware brings the Raspberry Pi 2 into a new era of sophistication and performance, one which will promote development, support, and the making of new educational materials for all ages. All of that without changing the almost ridiculously cheap baseline cost of just $35. I for one cannot wait to see them in the hands of you guys and girls. That has been today's introduction to the brand new Raspberry Pi 2. I've been the Raspberry Pi guy and don't forget to like, subscribe and share for the very cutting edge Raspberry Pi news, tutorials and information. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.